we're just it's just taking a minute or two to uh, to live stream because we've had so much interest. We've had school. We have so many schools um, who wanted to come to this event that what we've had to do is pick a number of schools. So we're delighted to have St. Mary's Boys National School in Ferrybank, St. Paul's in Waterford, St. Oliver's in Clonmel and Holy Cross third and fourth class here on the audience. And then we are live streaming to, uh, to other schools um, um, across, across the Southeast. So um, I just want to welcome everybody to Science Week. This is a really special week where all around Ireland, uh, school pupils, adults, families are doing special things to, to celebrate science. This is coming from CalMAS, which is based in Waterford Institute of Technology. And we're at the STEM Engagement Centre. We think it's really important that everybody, young and old, has the chance to um, take part in science activities and to, to understand and explore different science um, areas. So we have 167 events taking place in the Kilkenny Festival, the Kilkenny Science Festival, the Wexford Science Festival, and the Southeast Science Festival. So we're delighted to welcome schools from Waterford, Wexford, Tipperary, and Kilkenny, and maybe there are other counties um, here as well. We are so happy that we have our friends from the Explorers in the National Land Aquarium, and they are going to um, show you a little video, and then we're going to have some questions. So just give me one minute and we are going to uh, to start that. Sorry, just give me one minute. Welcome to the Explorers Wild About Wildlife on the Seashore. Today, we're going to be looking at some of the coolest fish that you can find in the ocean. What you will need to have handy while watching is a pen or pencil and your workbook. Don't forget to check out the Explorers Safety and Conservation Code. These will help you stay safe on the seashore. Hey guys, I'm here in a rock pool at the lower shore where I'm hunting for some flatfish. Now you can get loads of different types of flatfish around Ireland. Uh, some of them are much easier to find in sandy kind of rock pools, others in more rocky and stony rock pools. But uh, they, they all have one thing in common which makes them pretty good at camouflaging. So you have to be pretty lucky to be able to see them as well. The Irish word for flatfish is the hogue. The ones I'd be looking for here in a rocky type area would be maybe a place or a flounder. Now you're very likely only going to find them when they're very young. The older ones are going to live much further out, so expect to find them quite small here. If you're in a very sandy area, you still might find some place, but you're also probably going to find some turbot as well. They're a much kind of sandier colour, so they camouflage in much better. Now the place is quite easily identifiable because of the coloration. They've got this kind of mottled, spotty kind of color on their back. Uh, sometimes those spots are kind of orange or red, and those spots just help them blend in with this kind of different color, stony, seaweedy bottom here. Each of the flatfish have a different Irish name. The one we see here today is the place, and in Irish it is called La Hogue Vallach. Now, the most noticeable thing about flatfish is their shape. Now, the interesting thing is they don't actually start out flat. When they're born, they're shaped like a normal kind of fish shape. Uh, they actually start to change in and around three weeks old where they'll go from normal fish shape and slowly turn on their side. And when they do this, one of their eyes moves from one side of their head over to the other and they spend the rest of their lives flat like you'll often find them here. Now the reason they do that is one, it's mainly for camouflage so they can hide from any predators that might come after them. Often you'll see flatfish buried in the sand or under the stones and it's very hard to see them because they don't poke up. But the other reason is they're predators and they're ambush predators. So they hide and if a little prawn or a shrimp just kind of comes by, they won't see them. They can dash out of the rocks or sand and they grab them and eat them before they realize. Now, in terms of sizes, they go from all ranges. So the place would be one of the smaller types of flatfish that you'll find here on the shore. You're only going to find them to be a couple of centimeters long. If you go out much further, you might get them to maybe 30 or 40 centimeters. But if you look at the halibut, which is probably the largest flatfish you'll get living around Irish waters, they will actually grow to over four meters in size. 
very unlikely to find them anywhere near here. They live much, much further out. What I have here guys in the bucket is our common blenny. So if you have a look just in there, you can see him swimming around just there. Now the common blenny is found down all over the shore, but you're likely to find them again, a bit further out into the lower shore, especially the bigger ones. So usually you can get them quite large like the one I have here, but even at their maximum size, you're talking about 16 centimeters long. But the smaller ones you find much further up on the upper shore might only be about the size of maybe your thumb or little finger or even a little bit smaller. Now, blennies get their name from the fact that they change their skin color, they blend in, and they can do this pretty quickly. Now, if you have them sitting underneath a rock, hiding around some bladder rack or some brown seaweed, they'll be quite a dark brown color. That was actually the same color that my one in the bucket was here before I placed them in the bucket. But after about 10, 15 minutes in the bucket, he has changed his color to adapt to try and look as close to the bucket's color as possible. So they'll do the same if they end up around different colored seaweed as well. So if you put them around green seaweed, they will often look a bit greener. Red seaweed, they'll look a bit more red. Now, blennies, if you do ever brush up against one or feel one swimming past you, you will find that their skin is quite slick and slimy. They have a layer of mucus that surrounds them that just keeps them moist when they are hiding on the shore. Because you'll often find them out of the water, they need a way to stay alive where they're not actually in the sea itself. And that just moisture, that mucus just keeps the moisture in and so they don't dry out and die. Now, the blenny is very distinguishable by, distinguished by the fact that it has quite an unusual face. It's got these big lips that hide this big set of teeth inside its mouth. And it also has a long dorsal fin that goes from just behind its head all the way to the tail. The Irish for the blenny is Ceann Ruan. What I have here is our butterfish. The butterfish, also quite commonly known as a rock gunnel. Butterfish is a great name for them though because it actually describes them really well. They get the name because they're really slippery, really slimy and hard to catch. And that's the point. When they're hunted by any of the other animals that live around the shore, like crabs or big fish or even seagulls and seabirds, and those animals try and grab the fish in their beaks or their claws or their mouths, the butterfish has a very good chance of actually slithering away and getting out of that grip. And once the butterfish then gets out of that grip, it has a very good chance of actually getting away. Because it's so wriggly and slimy and quick, it can escape quite easily. Now they can be a little bit tricky to find in different parts of the shore. There's a lot of them down here. You just have to know where to look. Generally, I'd recommend from the middle to the lower shore. The upper shore, you might have a small chance of seeing them, but it is a little bit harder and you're probably only gonna find the very small ones. Now looking at them, you'll notice a couple of things. One thing that might strike you is the color. Now they could be quite a brown and dull color, but don't be surprised if you see them being very bright, kind of yellow or orange. Sometimes they are really vibrant colors as well. You'll often always see these spots running along their body, almost from just behind the head to the tail. Those spots, if used correctly, actually act as a deterrent for animals because they kind of look a little bit like eyes. And if spotted by a predator and they can't see the butterfish very well, they might think twice about attacking an animal with such large eyes hiding under the rock. So the butterfish, when fully grown, can actually grow quite large. You can expect to find them up to about 20 centimeters long, which when you see them that big, makes them look quite a lot like eels. And they do get mistaken for eels quite commonly if you get them in their full size. They tend to eat smaller animals though. They've got that small mouth and they usually go for small little shrimp and things like that. Sometimes small crustaceans, but it has to be something that's small enough to fit into their mouth. They're not a huge predator, so they do go for any little thing. Shrimp is perfect. The Irish for butterfish is Schlauno. What I have here in the bucket is the worm pipefish. So the worm pipefish is a cousin to the seahorse. Now they're much easier to find than seahorses in Ireland, but pipefish are a tricky one to find on the shore. So they're not as common, they're a little bit rarer than some of the other animals we've seen today. In Irish, the pipefish is also known as Snohid Wara. There are other types of pipefish that can also be found near the seashore among the seaweed and shallow waters. 
One is the greater pipefish, which is known as Snahadwara war in Irish. It has a longer snout, which is actually half the size of its head, a hump behind its eyes, as well as a tail fin. Its body is divided into bony rings, and it can grow up to 46 centimeters in length. Pipefish are really hard to find because they're so slender, they're so small, and they blend in with the seaweed so well. What makes them quite unusual is, like seahorses, it's the male that gives birth as opposed to the female, which is really rare in the animal kingdom. So what I have in front of me here is a sea stickleback. Now the stickleback is one of the harder animals to find at the shore, especially compared to some of the other animals we've seen today. The sea stickleback's name in Irish is Garmacan Farago. The sea stickleback lives in the lower and subtidal area of the seashore among the seaweeds and rocks. The subtidal area is the lowest part of the shore when the tide goes out. They are often found here in rock pools as they like to hover in the water. An interesting thing about the 15 spined stickleback is that it is the male that looks after the eggs of the unborn fish. It actually creates a nest in the seaweed which can contain up to 200 eggs laid by the female stickleback. After the female has spawned its eggs, it is chased away by the male who then protects the eggs until they hatch. Now, the one I have here in the container is quite small. Stickleback can grow to about 20 centimeters long, which makes it a very big fish. Now, what's quite interesting about the stickleback is they get their name from the spines they have running along their back. Now, not only that, but you will get stickleback living in the sea as well as rivers and lakes, but they're different types of sticklebacks. So our sea stickleback, as you can imagine, lives here in the ocean where it's salty, whereas the other sticklebacks you'll find in Ireland will be ones that live in rivers and lakes and freshwater areas. Now, sticklebacks have quite small mouths, which is a really good indication of what they eat. So a small mouth means they eat very small animals, so they are predators, but they wouldn't be really aggressive, they wouldn't be hugely voracious feeders, whereas they will focus on much smaller animals. A really good indicator of what an animal eats is just by looking at its mouth. Big mouth means it eats big things, small mouth means it eats small things. What have we learned today? Let's have a quick look back. Now it's time for you guys to join in. What I'd like you to do is grab a pen, grab your copybooks. We're gonna do a little bit of creative writing. So what I'd like some of you to do is a news piece. Imagine a day in the life of the butterfish and write about what that day would be like if you were that butterfish. Maybe you could do a poem or turn that poem into a song or do a mix of both. Or all of you together could do a bit of artwork as well. Pick one of your favorite fish that we have discovered today. Make sure to include some of those features that you saw the camouflage, the shape of their bodies. Don't forget some were flat and some were long and skinny. You could also include the different types of fins and eyes each fish had. Remember, some are on the top of their body, and some looked like they had eyes all along their body, which were actually spots. You could also show the defense features they had, and as predators, their different mouths. We would also really love to see some of the names of the fish in English and Irish. And don't forget to include your favorite fishy fact. We had a wonderful day on the beach today. I hope you guys had fun. And remember, keep exploring.
thank you so much, Sheila. And thank you to CalMast and to Science Week for having the Explorers Education Programme along to your science festivals. It's amazing to meet all the schools on today. I was actually, um, I have to admit, I have to just say, uh, really hello to St. Oliver's in Camel because I'm actually a proud Tipperary woman myself. So I just have to get that plug in. But um, I'm based here in Galway now. So my name is Noreen, guys, and I am with the Explorers Programme. I work with Porig, who was in the wonderful video there about fish. And I suppose after watching that, I'm really curious to know if you have any questions about Ireland's marine life, about the animals you saw in the video, about what what to do if you wanted to head to the shore to go looking for animals yourself. Now, because there's such a large group on the call today with so many different classes, I want to make sure I get to everyone's questions. So what I'm going to suggest is we might start with one or two questions, maybe from a classroom that has unmuted. But I also have the chat bar open on my screen. So if there is some questions from your classroom and you're not really seeming to get a chance to ask them, write them into the chat and I'll do my best to answer them, okay? So if your teacher is there or somebody who can write in questions into the chat feature, they can send them directly to me or they can send them to everyone, that's fine, I don't mind either, but it might just help given that there's so many people on the call. However, just to start us off, I suppose, I wanna ask, does one of the questions or one of the classes want to ask a question? Is there a burning question out there? Oh, I can see lots of hands going up. So I think there are some questions. So maybe if one of those classrooms there um, uh, maybe uh, wants to unmute and, and ask a question. First one, Incher. Hi, Lord. Good morning. So what kind of, what question do you guys have? What is the rarest fish that you can, that you can find in the Irish? That's, that's a fantastic question and thank you very much for it. Um, okay, so I suppose when we think of rare species, we often think of species that are endangered or in very low numbers. I suppose they might also be species that are very uncommon in Irish waters. So when we think of things like giant squid, <laughs> so there's been like two cases of giant squid washed up on beaches or brought in on boats off of Irish coastlines. Uh, there has been, um, I think there was like a, it was one kind of, uh, there's been like a great white shark or poor beagle sharks as well, which are in Irish waters, but it's quite rare to see them on the shore. Um, there's been, there's a, some turtles that I think it's a, like Kemp's Ridley turtles, which are rare to see in our waters. Um, but if we were to say rare then as in endangered, there are quite a number of species. So again, there would be species of shark, um, which have low numbers. We have species of rays, which are in the same family as sharks, so things like undulate rays, which are in low numbers, and things like white skates and flapper skates. So there are some species that are kind of on endangered lists within Ireland, and we can find those in the, the, the IUCN red list for Ireland, um, but there will be other species then that are just more uncommon in Irish waters. Um, okay, so I can see somebody's asked how big are giant squid? Now, that's a fantastic question and I should know the answer. Uh, I'm going to say, as far as I'm aware, about eight to 10 meters in length. I, I think that is including the tentacles stretched out, but I could be wrong. They could grow a bit bigger. We don't know an awful lot about giant squid. The giant squid, I suppose, that we've really gotten to measure have been ones that have been washed up generally on beaches or have been brought in on vessels. Um, so their bodies aren't always in perfect condition. Um, and then we have some footage of giant squid in their environment in the deep sea alive, but it's quite rare. Um, Okay, I'm going to keep working through some of the questions that are coming in through chat, if that's okay, because I think it'll just give everyone an opportunity to write in a question, if that's all right. Um, what's the most common type of flatfish? That's a brilliant question. I wish I kind of knew the answer to it. I mean, the, the most common one that I'm aware of and has have seen off the Irish coast is place. 
But saying that, I don't know if that's a definite answer and it might be just because of the types of beaches I've been on and sandy beaches where flounder tend to like estuaries where rivers flow into the sea more. Um, so I don't know if we have a definite for like what's the most abundant or what flatfish has the biggest numbers in Irish waters. The most dangerous fish. I like that question. That is one that um, often gets asked. Actually, I got asked that in another class this week as well. Like, what fish would I be most scared of in Irish waters? That's going to have to be the weaver fish. Now, I I am sorry if that disappoints people. Uh, if they were hoping I'd say sharks or that. I love sharks and there are no dangerous sharks in Irish waters. Um, but the weaver fish, some of you may have heard of it is a fish that likes to live buried in the sand, a kind of the lower shore. So when the tide is out, um, we can be walking out across the sand. It generally affects only people that are going swimming in like, like sea swimmers or surfers. So you don't normally have to worry about weaver fish, but they have a spike on their back, which has a bit of toxin so we can get a sting from it. Not deadly, but very sore. Um, okay, so that's the weaver fish. And I suppose if you're ever on a beach and you see a sign up saying, you know, weaver fish are common here, then you'll know that's the one that can give you a sting. The largest fish in Ireland, that is the basking shark. So the largest fish in the world is the whale shark. And whale sharks and basking sharks are types of cartilaginous fish. There are around 71 species of shark and ray and skate in Irish waters. And the largest one is the basking shark, which is a beautiful fish that feeds on plankton and comes in around Ireland in the summertime, autumn time to feed and then moves off our coastline back into the open ocean in the winter time. So if you haven't seen footage of basking sharks, I would highly recommend that you Google a video. They're really wonderful to look at. Okay, a question from Miss Murphy's class. Are any of the fish in the video dangerous? No, no, they're not. Uh, the fish that we tend to find on the seashore aren't dangerous. As I said, the only one that can give you a sting is the weaver fish. So that's the only one to kind of be aware of. Uh, but the fish that you saw, a porig, the blennies, uh, the butterfish, the flatfish, all of those, no, none of them are dangerous to you. So you don't need to worry at all. Porig was on a beach here in Galway. It's called Grattan Beach. It's a beach that we use a lot because it's big and kind of flat. It has pools of water, sandy areas, rocky areas with lots of seaweed. So what that means is there's lots of different types of habitats for animals to live in and it makes it really easy for us to find animals. How long are pipefish? Okay, so that's going to depend on the species of pipefish. I don't know if you remember, but Porig spoke about worm pipefish and then greater pipefish. So greater pipefish are longer. I'm going to say for the greater pipefish, we can get maybe up to about 20, 25 centimeters, give or take. That might not be an exact measurement. And then for the worm pipefish that was actually in the video, we're talking more about 10 to 15 centimeters in length. But amazing animals and so well camouflaged when they're in amongst the seaweed. What's the smallest fish in Ireland? That's a brilliant question. And I actually saw it as I scrolled up and I was thinking, I'm not sure I know that. Um, so the smallest, what you're really asking there, I suppose, is what's the smallest fish that never grows any bigger, that only grows to a maximum size of, I don't know, three or four centimeters. I'm going to say there are small types of goby. So we get a goby called two spotted goby, uh, but you get little fish, um, you get little fish in fresh water as well. I know we would have called them minnows. I'm sure that's not their right technical name. Um, so you do get some species of fish that are quite small and will only grow maybe to, you know, under 10 centimeters in length. But that one's caught me out. So well done. Well done. Um, that rarest fish question again. Yeah, I think probably something like your flapper skate, which is really on like that endangered list within Irish waters. And scientists are working so hard to collect data so that we can preserve them, conserve them, um, create a safe space for them to live in. Uh, we have a couple of areas where they're known to have 
lived in the past and breed like in Galway Bay and Tralee Bay and places like Donegal Bay. So it's often we're trying to conserve those kind of special areas. Actually, we have some really rare species in the deep sea as well, just to mention. Uh, so we're talking about the seashore today, but if you look up, uh, there was a new shark species only discovered about, I think it's two years ago now, the blue mouth shark. Oh, I hope I got the name of that right. Uh, but it was off the Irish coastline uh, along our continental shelf. And there are some videos of rare shark nursery being discovered online. Which fish is caught the most in Irish waters? That's a brilliant question. So I suppose if we're talking about commercial fisheries, then it's probably, oh, I wish I knew this now exactly. There is a thing called uh, the stock book which scientists use to work out how many fish are in Irish waters, how many males and females, how many two, three, four, five, six, like what age ranges they are, so that we can kind of try and help plan our fisheries so that we are able to catch fish for food, but we don't wipe them out. So that's the ultimate goal, I suppose, is that we kind of keep a balance. Um, and I think that mackerel, are pretty high in that list. So mackerel are one of our highest commercial fish that we catch, but then we would also probably get fish like pollock as well. Um, and uh, fish maybe, oh, I'm trying to think now, uh, like hake, things like hake and haddock and whiting would all be really, you know, common fish that are caught as part of our fisheries as well. Okay. The next question, how long can butterfish survive out of the water? Not too long, really. No fish likes to be out of the water. They can live in, some of them can live kind of in damp conditions for a couple of hours where their gills stay moist and damp so they can continue to breathe. But really, fish like water, so they're not going to like to be out of, the, out of the water for too long. And they're going to get stressed. And once a fish gets stressed, then it's, it's really, once an animal gets stressed, it's not good for it. Um, oh, great question. What's the most colorful fish in Irish waters? Definitely, I'm going to say the wrasse. So if you like fish and you like colorful fish and you want to research colorful fish, then I would say look up things like your gold shinny wrasse. Uh, all of the fish within the wrasse family, beautiful colors and lovely to see when people are out diving. How big is a basking shark? Oh, great question. I was just thinking I shouldn't have mentioned it without knowing what size it is. It's about the length of a minibus. So again, we're talking, I think, around that kind of eight to 10 meter mark. Um, I wish I, I should know that off uh, properly, but I'm going to, that's my estimate. What's my favorite type of fish? Oh, thank you very much, uh, Miss Tracy's class. Um, oh, it's a hard one. I love sharks. Um, I love the wrasse as well. I love lump suckers. There's a fantastic Irish fish called a lump sucker or lump fish. It's like a little blue box shape, um, really unusual. If you haven't seen one before, look up a picture of a lump fish and they have a sucker on the bottom of their body that they use to stick onto things. So they're just fascinating. Um, okay, do all fish have teeth? Great question. They do, but different types of teeth. So depending on what I want to eat. So um, now, there is a type of fish called jawless fish, and they include hagfish and lamprey. And hagfish and lamprey have like a disc of teeth. So they will attach onto the thing they want to eat and they kind of rasp away a little bit and then they swim off again. So they're jawless fish. And then if we're thinking of sharks and bony fish, they'll have uh, either teeth, I suppose, a bit like ours for chewing, or they'll have teeth for crushing. So um, something like, um, I'm trying to think now, uh, there are types of sharks and rays that have these teeth. They'll just be like, you know, the teeth at the back of your mouth, the molars. So they'll want to crush. So they'll eat crabs and lobsters and shellfish. And then we'll also have things like basking sharks who just have lots and lots of little tiny, you know, very tiny teeth for filtering food out of the water. Um, so they won't even probably really look like teeth at all. Okay, uh, how many giant squid get eaten by sperm whales every day? 
absolutely no idea. Apologies. I, I don't know. the. That is a fantastic question, but I don't know the answer to it. I would imagine giving sometimes like the feeding patterns of animals like that that live in really extreme environments like the deep sea, they tend to eat a lot and not too often so they have to eat when they get the opportunity and then they might get the opportunity for a couple of days or a week or maybe even a month so I don't I wouldn't say they eat one a day I would say it's that if they they eat what's there and they eat what's available animals like that are often called opportunistic feeders so unlike us where we can go to the shop and pick out the things we like in nature often animals just have to eat what's on offer um, and in the deep sea it's going to really be a case of hunting for the things you can catch you can get are there water snakes in Ireland no no there aren't but there are water spiders so if you're at the seashore you might be lucky enough to see a spider uh, that lives in our ocean but no snakes as far as I know there's no uh, water snakes in Ireland not native anyway how long do you fish in Ireland live for great question it varies greatly so we have marine animals that live for uh, a month <laughs> for a year or two and we even have fish that can live up to 160 180 years old which are the orange roughy so there's a huge variation there in what can live for what length and of course then we have to ask the question how long do they get to live sometimes as well okay um Sorry, I'm just going to scroll down here. How many species of fish in Irish waters? Great question. I got asked this earlier this week and I did not know the answer. So I have actually looked this one up. There are around 400 species of fish in Irish waters. Uh, around 350 of them live in the ocean and around 40 species of freshwater fish. Um, have you seen clams open and sticking out there? Uh, I haven't seen it in real life. I've seen it in a video. It was amazing to watch the shellfish moving, burying itself, moving along. But I've only seen it on video footage. I've actually never caught it happening in real life. Uh, what's the hardest fish to catch? Good question. Uh, I'm not good at catching fish at all. So I probably say all of them, to be honest. Um, I imagine something in the deep sea, probably, Joan, uh, you know, something that is going to be difficult to maybe get a net down to or an animal is going to be very clever be able to move away hide camouflage um but that's a good question um how long do flatfish live for generally uh the bigger you know if they're able to grow to full adult size you could get flatfish living to 20 25 years um are lines being jellyfish dangerous yeah, they are. They can give you a sting. Um, thankfully, most people don't die from it. Uh, in fact, the jellyfish we have in Irish waters, most of them aren't that dangerous, you know. Um, but you could get a sting from a lion's mane. And if you see lion's mane's jellyfish on a beach, I would say don't go up and touch it. You know, don't be like, oh, we'll just chance it. Um, it could be quite painful. And um, that then you might be kind of regretting your decision. So, uh, yeah. They, and the stings, they can still sting you when they're dead. So uh, just to be aware of that. How long can a dolphin hold his breath for? That's a brilliant question. Um, I'd only be given a guess at this one now. I think most dolphins could be maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes, but I could be wrong. Oh, I probably am wrong. You should definitely look that one up. Um, and then there are some whales that can hold their breath for a couple of hours. So again, it just kind of depends on the species, where their natural habitat is, what depth they generally live at. What's the most endangered species of fish? Okay, um, so I suppose I'm going to come back then to something like maybe the flapper skate again, something like some of our sharks. The reason they're so endangered is because we caught them, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. So we would have fished for them. And because they reproduce, so the way they have their young is they lay an egg case and then one baby is born from that egg case. And then that baby has to mature and become an adult before it can have a young of its own so because they reproduce so slowly if we catch large numbers of them they can be very quickly wiped out where if you look at a fish like a cod they can spawn so in fisheries that's what we call it when they release eggs out into the water they can release up to you know hundreds of thousands of eggs at a time so they have the potential to have lots of young all in one go, all in one season in one year. Now, 
most of those eggs die or get eaten and they don't all last till adulthood, but there's a much higher potential. So that's why sharks and rays and skates are more prone to ending up on our endangered list. How long do basking sharks live for? Oh gosh, I'm going to say around 20 years, but again, I would suggest looking that one up because that is, that is a guess. Um, and I'm going to look that one up after this class. That's a great question. Okay, uh, what does a shark eat? fishy so sharks will eat a range of things depending on so some sharks will eat shellfish and crab and lobster some sharks will eat other fish and basking sharks eat plankton so they swim along at the surface of the ocean and they graze they it's like a cow in a field they just swallow in mouthfuls of tiny plants and animals so different sharks have different food how many sharks are found in irish waters there's 71 species of shark and ray and skate. I think of those around 35 are shark species. How long does a how long is a whale shark? Uh, is it very big if I say a little bit longer than a basking shark? So I think they're about a meter or two bigger. Again, you're talking about kind of that mini bus size, if you can picture that in your head. Um, clownfish live for, oh, I'm not very good on non-native species. And clownfish is definitely taking me away from Ireland. I wouldn't even like to hazard a guess. They're a small fish. So I'm going to say, I'd say under 10 years, but that is really a guess now. So don't, don't take that as gospel. Um, how long can turtles live for longer? <laughs> so turtles, I think we're talking, you know, 50, 60 years for turtles. Um, okay, I hope I'm just checking there that I didn't no, hello from Tipperary. Hello, St. Tolerance. Yes, as I said, I'm so, it's so lovely. Um, so it's really lovely to be with all the Waterford schools as well. I like Waterford too. I have lots of relatives in Waterford. Um, are octopus fish? No, that's a great question. And the answer is they are not. So in the ocean, uh, fish are types of vertebrate and they have a backbone. But in fact, there are thousands and thousands of marine invertebrates or I'm going to like hundreds of different types. Um, and marine invertebrates are animals with no backbone and that would include your octopus and your cephalopods and if people are interested on the explorers website you'll actually find more wild about wildlife on the seashore videos but you'll also find our new cephalopod science investigation materials and videos as well which talk all about octopus and squid um, and kraken and all that so um, if you're interested in that check that out on the website i can share the link with you later how does how that's a brilliant question how do electric eels generate electricity um electric eels generate electricity by a special organ which is in their body that they can generate it's like a static electricity so when we're talking about electricity here it's not like the electricity that's coming out of the plug it's like the static electricity you know the shock you'd get off of the car door or the shopping trolley or something like that so it's that kind of electrical charge and they have a special organ in their body that produces that my favorite fish to eat i'm I'm going to say it's probably, this is quite a boring answer, but it's probably something like monkfish, really nice. I grew up in Tipperary, so didn't eat a lot of fish, I'm going to say, when I was little, uh, so I'm not the most adventurous. Do fish get thirsty? Uh, yes, in the sense that they do need water, but they don't need to drink water like we do, so they just take in water through the environment they're in. Um, okay, next question. What do weaver fish eat? Uh, ooh, uh, other little fish, I think, or maybe crabs and prawns as well. I actually need to check that one out. Do flatfish lay eggs? Yes, yes, they do. So flatfish, like other bony fish, they spawn. So when the females are old enough and they produce eggs in their body, they can release all those eggs out into the water. And then those eggs can uh, produce baby fish out in the water. They often don't look quite like the fish when they're really tiny and they're babies. And then as they grow, they'll form that kind of fishy shape that we're used to. Okay, do dolphins sleep? Yes, so marine mammals sleep by shutting down half their brain at a time. When the right side of their brain is asleep, their left eye will be closed. And when the left side of the brain is asleep, their right eye will be closed. So yes, they do sleep. Can we tell fish emotions from their colors? Oh, generally not. Uh, so it depends. It depends. You saw the fish there that Porig showed you in the video, the Blenny, where it was camouflaged 
and it lightened to blend in that's more a safety reflex rather than an emotion it's like it's changing shape to blend in um cuttlefish and cephalopods change their shape to communicate or change their color to communicate but they're not a fish um and i'm not sure i mean there probably is some fish that do communicate by changing colors but i'm not a i'm not aware of them off the top of my head sorry okay what fish eat the most i'm going to say other fish so mo for most fish they're probably either in the middle or the top of the food chain and they're going to eat smaller smaller fish some fish will eat plankton so they'll eat tiny plants and animals uh we've talked about the most endangered fish so i'll just keep going and the rarest fish if that's okay how do sea creatures keep their eyes open underwater that's a great question. Uh, as far as I know, uh, they don't really have eyelids, so don't think they have any option rather than to keep them. Okay, Miss Murphy has a serious question here. Because of climate change, would not any non-native fish come to Ireland? Yes, yes is the answer to that. And yes, as our ocean's temperature changes around Ireland, we will see species that were rare and maybe only spotted or sighted every so often, like slipper lobsters, they will become more common in our waters. Um, and we could also find that fish that are very common in Irish waters at the moment actually move northwards. So they leave Irish waters. They don't die out or anything, but they move. So for some species, climate change and sea temperatures rising will mean they move. And then for other species, we may lose them here because maybe they might be an animal that lives on a rock, so they can't move around too easily. But yes, the species of animal that live here over time could change. Just like if we were to look back all the way to the last ice age, animals in the past that have lived here have changed as well. The smartest fish. Now, that's a hard question because I suppose how we rate smartness can be very um, subjective. So it can be very dependent on one person to the next, what they think smart means. But what I am going to say to you is, is when we think of fish, often people think of the whole idea of goldfish, you know, a kind of a, a 10 second memory. But wild fish have to survive. So they will have strategies in place like changing their color, finding their food, uh, finding their friends, uh, moving from one area to another. So moving from a river to the sea and then back to the river to have their young. So there are lots of smart fish out there. There are fish that are born in the Sargassum Sea, which is over near Mexico, travel all the way to Ireland on the Gulf Stream when they're only babies, live here in Ireland as they grow up, and then as adults swim back to Mexico again to have their young. So that would be conger eels. Um, there are herring that move around and can communicate with each other. Um, there are sharks that know where to go to have their young, their nursery areas, and the move to feeding areas and move to other. So there are lots of smart animals and smart in the sense that they know how to survive and they have survived for hundreds of millions of years, but maybe slightly smart, not smart as sometimes how we might think of smart as in, you know, scoring 10 out of 10 in a test or, uh, you know, being able to recite a poem or something. Okay. Um, What's the hardest fish to spot? I would say one that is really good at camouflage. And we have lots of great examples of that. Uh, think about, um, you know, the flatfish we saw there. Uh, we think of um, even sharks, you know, that uh, have a thing called counter shading, where they're dark on the top, light on the bottom. All those strategies make them hard to see. So camouflage is incredible. And we've copied it in so many things like camouflage painting, camouflage clothing. Uh, we like learning from animals and copying animals. How do creatures live in deep water or shallow water? Yeah, that's a great question. Not many animals can go. I suppose some most animals will either live in one habitat or another. They won't go between them up and down, um, you know, so their body design will kind of be designed for either deep sea water pressure or shallow areas. And that's why 
when we catch things like giant squid with fishing nets and they're brought to the surface, they don't survive the change in the water pressure. Um, but they're just designed to build that way. Bony fish have a thing inside them like a balloon. It's called a swim bladder. They can change the amount of air that's in it so that they can change their buoyancy and density. And sharks have a lot of oil in their liver to actually help them with their floating. Sperm whales have a head that's full of spermaceti oil, which helps them to control their density as well as they dive up and down. And lots of seabirds that dive into the sea have reinforced bones within their skeletons so that when they hit the water, they don't damage from the pressure and the impact. Um, so again, Animals are just amazing with the adaptations they've developed. Um, what would happen if all the fish in the world went extinct? It's oh, a sad question, isn't it? Suppose we have to think back to there's been about seven mass extinctions over time. So generally, when large groups of animals go extinct, uh, we have had cases where up to 90% of all the living creatures on the planet have gone extinct in other past mass extinctions. Um, so the animals that are left behind will live on. And in fact, there's it's pretty fair to say that we wouldn't be here if the dinosaurs hadn't got extinct, because at the time of the dinosaurs, there was only really small mammals around. And then mammals just exploded in numbers and diversity after the dinosaurs went extinct. So if all the fish in the world were to become extinct, other animals would probably take their place. But obviously, the balance of nature and biodiversity you don't want to be losing any animals if you can, you know, you don't want animals to be going extinct. You want to try and conserve and find a balance of living with other living things on the planet. How long uh, can humans dive in the well, there's only been three people in the Mariana Trench. <laughs> so, and they have been in submersibles. Uh, so David Cameron went down in a submarine called the Challenger Deep and the Triest went down in 1969, I think it was, uh, with two gentlemen on board. So we've had very few people just to mention Mariana Trench is the deepest place on the planet. It is a, over 10,000 meters down. You could put Mount Everest down into it and it wouldn't hit the surface of the water. So um, just, yeah, a very, very deep area. Uh, the trench is found just south of Japan. You can look it up on Google Maps, actually, if you, if you type in Mariana Trench. What fish has the most fins? Brilliant question. And I'll be honest, I honestly don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, there are fish, I suppose, like sea dragons that have lots of little extra fins and stuff uh, for uh, making them look different and kind of blending in with around them. What's the most jelly? Oh, the most dangerous jellyfish. I don't know. I'm going to say something like the box jellyfish, but I'll just put my hands up right now and say I don't know much about them uh, because they're not in Irish waters. So you probably could tell me that it's a different one and I'm wrong. Uh, can fish see colour? Oh, gosh, that's a great question. I think they can see color, but it depends on the species, what spectrum of color they're seeing. I know animal vision is different to ours. Your dog doesn't see the colors you see. Um, things like, man, I think it's mantis shrimps can actually see a whole range of UV uh, spectrum light that you can see. So they see more colors. So it depends on the animal and a mantis shrimp is a fish. Fair enough. Um, what's the most dangerous? Okay. What's the oddest looking fish? Oh gosh, hard question. Um, probably something like a blobfish, I'm going to say. There's some pretty unusual fish out there, especially if we look at the deep sea. Um, and did I ever swim with sharks? Yes, every time I go swimming in Irish waters, I swim with sharks. So there are lots of species of shark in Irish waters and lots of wonderful Irish sharks, lots of little sharks like dogfish and bullhuss. And there's a pretty good chance if you've been out swimming, you've been swimming with sharks. Um, and what habitat does the blobfish live in? Uh, deep sea, I'm going to say. But uh, again, you're going to have to look that one up. So, guys, wow, that was so many questions. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Fantastic. I loved all those. I hope I answered them. Uh, to some degree I'm really sorry to the people who I just didn't know uh, but you will have to let me know won't they Sheila they'll have to let me know what the answers were absolutely gosh there were so many wonderful questions and um, it was great to see so many interested um, classes and children in um, in all in all the in the schools 
We've just had a fantastic response. And Noreen, thank you so much for your wonderful questions. You know so much about the, the oceans and, and the fish. Um, it's wonderful to hear you. Um, just um, I, teachers, um, for us to bring events like this uh, to schools, we need to get funding from different organizations. So I'm just, we're putting um, a, a teacher survey link into the, um, into the chat. And we're hoping this, that teachers might just fill that out. It'll help us to uh, secure secure funding so we can bring events like this to all schools, um, to all schools free of charge. Um, for us, um, it's wonderful to, to have our friends uh, at the Atlantic Aquarium and to have Noreen here. Um, I think the next time we go to the sea and we see the fish, we'll be looking at it in very different lights. We'll be looking out for those dangerous fish and the most colourful fish and Maybe trying to count out to count all the, the bones in, in fish that we that we catch. So once again, I just want to thank you so much and for all for proving to be a fantastic audience and having fantastic um questions. Um all our events are on calmas.ie or stemkilkenny.ie or Wexford Science Festival.ie. So make sure you check them out. Noreen has just put the explorers.ie uh, details into the chat if you want to find out any more information. So once again, happy Science Week and thanks so much for taking part. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.